After a memorable week for Dulwich Hamlet, it's a return to the bread and butter of the league today with Bognor Regis Town welcoming them to Nywood Lane. The Hamlet enjoyed a famous night on Tuesday by booking a quarter-final spot in the FA Trophy for just the second time in their history as Braintree Town were demolished 5-2. Beginning the day five points off the playoffs, they welcome Dippo Akinyemi back into the starting eleven, along with Jamie Maskell rejoining from Grey's Athletic. The league leaders were also in action in midweek, twice leading against Hendon, only to draw 2-2. However, they do have an impressive recent record, having just lost once in the last 12 games. Jamie Howells signed ex-Hampton, Richmond Borough and Slough Town striker Charlie Moon, but he isn't involved today. Instead, Gary Charman and Ollie Pearce come in for Dan Beck and Elijah Adebayo, the latter returning to parent club Fulham. The visitors won both times they played it last season, including the epic playoff semi-final. Will it be a hat-trick of successes, or can the hosts repeat their victory at Champion Hill from earlier in the campaign? As Fraser trying to send it in, did wrap his foot around it, but uh, no power. Jamie Maskell re-signed for Dulwich before today with the clearance. Goes wide to the far side, Dylan Barnett forward. Now with Pierce, Ollie Pierce always seems to score against Dulwich, sends in a decent looking ball, Michael Chambers gets a little touch on it, and set goals by Fraser. Bit of pinball going on, Drage away, still not cleared, and Chambers puts his foot through it, and that could have been an early goal for the hosts. Mewitt, Barnett slid in there, Maskell, Mewitt again, Tuck, not many players beat Cargbo for strength and he's set an early ball over the top for Akinyemi to chase, he'll get there ahead of El Abd, uh, bearing down towards the penalty area Akinyemi, beating El Abd as well and saved by Lincoln, can turn a pace from Dippo Akinyemi, Weatherstone, Beanie, Cargbo, Dolage have found their rhythm in this game now, Chambers forward, Carew, Chambers again, Tomlin, Michael Chambers still coming forward to his left is Carew now, just inside the Bogner area, a couple of step overs onto his right foot, goes for goal at the near post and just wide, Lincoln may well have had it covered, wonderful play, Michael Chambers striding forward, Lincoln to restart play, and he flicked that on to Drage, Carew, found a bit of space there. Really grew into the game nicely midweek, Carew. That's broken down for Dulwich, it's Mewitt. Coming forward is White. First time ball in, Mewitt turns. Couldn't quite wrap his foot around that. As a result, couldn't steer it inside Preston Edwards near post. Go short, here's Gavin Tomlin. Maskell, own goal, Drage will claim it. But I think that'll go down as an own goal from James Fraser. Great work from the short corner for Dulwich. It's not always worked for them this season. On this occasion it does, and just inside 18 minutes they take a lead in this one. Maskell went short to Tomlin. Drew the defender to uh, make the challenge, just dragged it back for Maskell. Low ball in, Drage made a nuisance of himself. I'll say I think the last touch may have come off James Fraser. Either way, Dulwich lead, 1-0. Not going to be an in-swinger though, it's going to be Dylan Barnett's take. Just Ming to block. And towards Field, tucked back into the danger zone, flick goalwards. Field it was, with the second header as well as the first. Straight into the arms of Edwards, not really enough power on the header as well. Top. Ming. Drage for Chambers, Maskell, Beanie, finds Carew here, Akinyemi made a small run, Carew's held onto the ball, releases Maskell, deflects another corner, wouldn't blame them for staying home and wrapping up warm, it is bitter down here in Bognor Regis, Tomlin again to take, and towards Chambers, off the crossbar and over, it was looping towards the goal, just not quite enough for Michael Chambers. Lincoln searching for White. It's Chambers who heads clear. Fraser gets the loose ball. Former Lewis man releases White. Can he pull it back? Yes, he can. Drage well positioned, only finds White. Fraser's there. Across goal and wide. That wasn't far wide of Preston Edwards' far post. Just trying to guide it across the goalkeeper. But again, will be charged down, but has time on his hands. Good clearance downfield. The hero here last season in the playoff semi-final, saving that Jason Pryor penalty at 0-0. Beanie, Akinyemi, 
Trying to beat field on the inside. Stuck out a leg. Cargo strikes it first time. Picks out Tom Liddy's offside. Good save by Dan Lincoln anyway. He wouldn't have counted. Not kept as many clean sheets as they'd have liked this year. Kept more in cup competitions than in the league. Well, they were brilliant at Braintree in that nil-nil draw last Saturday. Here's Cargbo. Early ball for Fracking Yemi. And he's there ahead of El Abd. He's gone for goal early. Lincoln holds it low, trying to catch the goalkeeper out there. And only Hollow and Needham Market have picked up more points at home this season than Bognor Regis. 33 points they've managed here. Chambers under pressure from Charman here. Fraser immediately looks up, rolls it through the legs of Matt Drage. Hit goalwards. Mewitt sliding in. Edwards holds it low. Lovely play from James Fraser. That's what he's capable of. An excellent playmaker in this side. Lovely footwork from Ollie Pierce there. Turnover from Weatherstone. And burst his way into the area. Almost came to fruition for his side. Being prevented the corner. Barnett. Fraser. Again, drop of the shoulder, tries to turn away. Off balance, struck it goalwards and curled a long way over in the end from James Fraser. Barnett. Misplaced. Drace can stick his foot through that and send long. And Fields misjudged at the other end. Here's Tomlin. Just slowing it up. Fields sticks out a leg. Akinyemi. And he finds a shot back to Dip Akinyemi. Trying to drop of the shoulder, couldn't find the space. Maybe should have just tried a shot at him and hope for the best. Try and wrap it around the goalkeeper. Pierce. That's a lovely ball forward. Fraser, layoff for White. And Mu will chase Drage. Got there first. Knew that Fraser was making the run. Continued into the area as Mu picks up the ball again. On for Harvey White. He's gone for goal. Wide of the near post. And it's a goal kick. Chambers. Searching for Tomlin. Holds up on the chest. Carew. Akinyemi will take on Elabd. He's nicked it off. Sammy Elabd. Edge of the area. Akinyemi. Waiting for some support. Rolls it off. Cargbo takes a touch. On for Tomlin. Back with Cargbo to drill first time and straight at the goalkeeper. Didn't have to move there, Dan Lincoln. Hit with a lot of power by Cargbo. Straight at the goalkeeper. Kevin Tomlin will take as Chambers and Drage and Weatherstone make their way to join Crew and Akinyemi. Weatherstone it is, he flicks it on. Chambers for Carew. Akinyemi takes a touch and a second. Pokes it goalwards. Not enough conviction in the strike though. A bit of a toe poke. Ming will go all the way back to his keeper. Down the line by White. Pierce crops up on that. Popped off on that uh, right hand side for a change. Fraser. Got Barnett joining the attack on this near side. Just rolls it out to him. Taking on Ming. Back with Fraser. Can he find some space to work the shot? Yes, he can. That's not far wide. Ebbers at full stretch. Just curling away from goal from James Fraser. Excellent connection with the shot. Too much bend on it, though, as he looked to find that far corner. Throwing men forward now. As you'd expect, chasing the game with little time remaining. Well delivered, free header! 1-1! One, one. It's James Crane off the bench. No one picked him up. And he's planted his header into the far corner despite the best efforts of Ashley Carew. And with a little over five minutes to play, Bogner Regis have drawn level here. Well, they've been the better side throughout this second half. As I say, the corner came in. And Dulledge will wonder how Crane had a free header in there. Plants it across Edwards. And Dulledge... In it comes. Maskell sends it goalwards. Dropped by the keeper. Gathers at the second attempt at his feet. Dan Lincoln. Quick. Deep ball in. Ming deflects his clearance against Tuck. He'll get to the loose ball first. Doug Tuck. Barnett. Excellent ball in. Shout of handball. Drage gets it clear. Holly Pierce on the far side. Bogner throwing everything at this Dulles defence now. Fraser.
Tuck, Fraser, sends it goalwards, and that's curled over the bar. Goal kick, not going to be his day today, I don't think, James Fraser. Gavin Tomlin, ball at feet, up towards the Kadja. There is the full-time whistle, and it's two more drop points on the road this season for Dulwich Hamlet. They were leading for so much of the game, but five minutes from time, a header from James Crane, unmarked from a corner, gave Bognor Regis a share of the spoils. Dulwich had taken a lead after 18 minutes through uh, an own goal from James Fraser. Well, uh, after Matt Drage had caused a few problems at the penalty area, forced it into his own net. Fraser himself had several chances during the afternoon to uh, register a goal at the right end. It wasn't to be. A uh, draw probably a fair result this afternoon. As I say, Dulwich dropped two more points on the road this season. Final score at Nywood Lane is Bognor Regis Town 1, Dulwich Hamlet 1. So Gavin, would you say that was 85 minutes worth of good work undone in the last five? Yeah, we know it's hard to come here. Um, everyone knows that. Um, they play nice football. Um, work hard as a team as well and well organised um, so I thought <clears throat> we know you have to weather a storm the second half we had to weather a storm um, but still probably had the better chances even in the second half on the counter attack um, and didn't take them so yeah obviously um, disappointed to concede in the manner we did Jamie firstly do you think that was a fair result today? Uh, yeah I think so I think first half I thought um, Dulwich were a far the better team um, I think maybe Maybe gave them a little bit too much respect. We're too far off them. We couldn't get tight to the ball. And that's credit to them. You know they always play very good football anyway. But um, you know I thought second half. You know you one 0 down, so we needed to risk it and uh, push people, people a little bit more forward. And uh, I thought we were, were were better second half and and got the goal later on. And yeah, I thought pretty a fair result today. The last two and a half games up until that point against Braintree and most of today the back three and the whole defence were very good in their penalty area. You must be very angry that there was a free run in that for that corner. Yeah, it's, yeah, to be honest, it's, it's ridiculous, to be honest, from, from everyone who's gone back because you're defending with five minutes to go in a game which is really important to win um, and, and to concede in that manner. Um, it's limp, it's, it's, to be honest with you, it's the disgrace, to be honest. Disappointed as well that the second half when you got those chances, the trigger wasn't maybe being pulled? Yeah, I, I, I think we're coming to a point now where we've, we've spoken about this a lot of times, we keep creating opportunities. Um, and we keep not taking them. It's, it's, it's got to the point of the season where it's, 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 it's quite telling and it's, um, it's giving us an oppo uh, a ch less opportunity really to, uh, to go on and do well. Certainly in the second half you're getting more cross into the box trying to put that defence under a lot more pressure than you were in the first. I think so, yeah. I think, you know, uh, we, I don't think we did enough first half. I think, uh, not, not that the boys didn't try, I think they did, but I think, you know, we were just too deep when we got the ball. We were too, too far away from the goal to do any danger and any damage. So I think in, end, in the end, you know, very pleased how we changed it and normally it's very difficult to change it after you know first half was tough for us but second half I thought we did very well. On the plus side though you handed another debut to Jamie Maskell returning from Grays how did you rate his impact in replacing Nathan Green? Seemed very lively particularly in that first half. Yeah we know Jamie's a good player he's come through the academy um, he's done really well um, he knows the boys so it made it uh, more comfortable for him um, he's going to be a future player whether it be at Dulwich or, or, or beyond he'll do really well um, and I thought he acquitted himself really well. Disappointed you maybe didn't test the goalkeeper enough and warm his hands? Yeah, I think so. I think that's probably uh, an ongoing problem for us a little bit at the present moment. Um, you know, getting to good areas at certain times, but it's a final final cross, final shot. It's not good enough. Saying that, I thought we had a couple of excellent efforts. I thought James Fraser had a few really good chances to score, so I can't knock all the quality all the time. I thought that was good. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, a fair point for us. Do you think after the emotions of Tuesday night and those two games against Braintree that maybe they got the better of you at times today, just maybe tired out a little in the second half? Um, no, I think I think Bogner came out and, and played slightly more um, forceful and direct um, and trying to hurt us uh, in behind and I thought we didn't cope with it very well. Um, we kept on <coughs> getting pinged back and because we didn't cope with it very well um, and then it made it hard for us to put our authority on the game. Also, I don't think we kept possession very well in the second half and we turned over possession without them really getting the ball back. It was just really lazy, lazy play from us. Um, so yeah, that was disappointing. Uh, I wouldn't put it down to anything to do with Tuesday. Um, 
opportunities that's come and gone. I don't think that affected the boys' performance today. I just feel that we didn't manage the game as well as we should have uh, today, and it's quite a disappointing uh, result in the end. Five points in the last four games. Happy with that or disappointed, would you say? Well, I think we're overachieving all year. So to be honest with you, it's, it's you know I think that's the trouble when you suddenly get to this stage and you sort of maybe we've not had that sort of form all year, and then you hit that form and it's sort of like oh it's a struggle, but. No, that's just it's going to happen all, all throughout the season ours might just happen now so what we need to do you know we picked up some good points you know hending away you know a point here is, is not bad at all you know Dull is an excellent team doing really well in the trophy and always play well so you know I'm quite pleased with it I'm sure other teams are going to drop points as well so we just got to keep doing what we're doing and I'm sure those wins will come back again just finally at 16 away games this season only two defeats but the fact you've got nine draws must be very frustrating to sit there and look at that it is when you know that you probably should have won a lot of them it is, yeah. There's not many of those draws that I'd say we we're lucky to get the draw. It's normally the other way around. We, sh we should have had the points. And, you know, if we have had the points, <clears throat> you know, um, we're probably sitting near the top of the league, or if not the top of the league. And now we're, we're trying to fight to get in the playoffs, you know, which is it's quite frustrating for me as a manager. But um, we uh, we accept that there's not much we can do. We, we set the team up in a, in a way that... Um, gives them opportunity to, to dominate and win games and at the end of the day it's, it's a game played by humans and sometimes humans we you know we, we don't always do what we'd like to do. Thanks Gav.